This rock saved the U.S., and I'm going to tell you what it is, its history, and how it did. After World War II, the once plentiful iron ore was depleted. The material necessary for steel production was almost gone, and in the soon coming years, steel mills in the U.S. couldn't make any more cars, buildings, planes, etc. So what was next? Was there something else? Another material? Well, that was what scientists and engineers hoped as they started experimenting with a rock called taconite, one that was very plentiful in the iron range. It was something that was originally considered to be a waste rock, due to its low iron content, as it is 27% iron and 51% silica. But as scientists researched and experimented, they came up with a process that would extract the iron from the rock. Although, this would require a lot of processing, which meant more taxes and more money. Despite this, the first taconite mine was opened by reserve mining in a town they created called Babbitt, in Minnesota, in 1952, after acquiring the land in 1945 and receiving environmental permission to dispose of the tailings in Lake Superior in 1947. The destination for the taconite would be to a taconite plant in a city they created called Silver Bay. From 1951 to 1955, construction was done on the site. In early 1956, it opened, and on April 6, 1956, its first load of taconite was shipped on the freighter Seal Austin when it loaded 10,800 tons of the pellets for East Chicago. The Erie Mining Company opened up one of their own soon after Reserve Mining did in Hoyt Lakes, Minnesota, and would build their own taconite plant in the mid-1950s. Their port would be called Taconite Harbor. By the late 1950s, reserve mining was producing 6 to 10 million tons of taconite pellets a year while disposing of what's known as the tailings or leftovers of the taconite into Lake Superior. This would become a big issue later. The problem with taconite still remained, though. It was extremely expensive because of tax. So, in response, Dr. Edward W. Davis, who was a big part of the experimentation and research of developing taconite pellets, and Iron Range lawmakers, pushed to change the way taconite mining was taxed. Their efforts were successful, as the Taconite Amendment of 1964 was passed. After this, many mining companies invested in and opened up taconite plants of their own. By the late 1960s, however, fears mounted that the tailings being dumped in a lake superior were harming wildlife and drinking water for nearby communities. Reserve mining was dumping around 67,000 tons of tailings per day. This would lead to reserve mining being sued in 1972 by the United States government. The result was a ruling against reserve mining in 1974, requiring them to close their plant immediately but they did find a way out. Appeals. Through a series of these, they were able to keep disposing of the tailings in Lake Superior until 1980, when finally an inland dumping grounds was established for the tailings. In 1986, reserve mining filed for bankruptcy. Some would describe this as karma. Taconite was discovered in the Mesabi Iron Range in 1870. In 1914, the Minnesota Experiment Station was founded and research was done on how to extract the iron from the rock. They found that if they grinded the taconite and used a magnet, they could separate some of the iron from the rock. So, the sulfur camp was opened and taconite was mined and tested to see if they could make the leftover iron suitable for smelting. The result was something they called Sinter. In 1919, the Masabi Iron Company formed, and the first load of Sinter was shipped later in 1921. But just three years later, the Masabi Iron Company stopped mining taconite. It couldn't compete with the iron ore that had higher iron contents than it did. Since there wasn't a dire need for it, the project was mostly abandoned. Taconite was considered waste rock. It would be mostly ignored until World War II and the pelletization process revived it. So, 
How does this pelletization process work anyways? The process of mining the taconite all the way down to the shipment to steel mills can be boiled down into six steps. See what I did there? Boiled down. Anyways. Step one. Taconite is a hard rock. So because of this, explosives are necessary to break it apart into small pieces. Step two. The snow blaster taconite is picked up by huge electric shovels that can carry up to 85 tons. These shovels dump the taconite into huge dump trucks. I mean, these dump trucks are as big as a house and can carry 240 tons of taconite each. These trucks take the taconite to the processing plant or to rail cars if the plant is of considerable distance away. Step 3. Now the taconite is sent to the crushers. The rock is crushed into the size of a marble by the rock crushing machines. Great name. After this, it is mixed with water and sent through the rotating mills until it is a fine powder. Step 4. Next, magnetism separates the iron ore from the taconite. What's left over is the rest of the rock. This is what the tailings are. They are not sent in a lake superior. Instead, they are sent to tailing basins or used in road making. Step 5. The concentrate, or the wet taconite powder, is sent in a large rotating cylinders that mix it with clay and roll it into a marble-sized ball. After this, the ball is dried and heated. Once it cools, it becomes hard. Now, the pelletization process is finished. The result is taconite pellets. Step 6. The taconite pellets are sent by rail to the ports of Duluth, Superior, Two Harbors, and Silver Bay. Then, they are loaded onto ships and delivered to steel mills where they are turned into steel. Taconite mines in the Great Lakes region are located in northern Minnesota. In Michigan, taconite is not used. Instead, hematite and magnetite rocks are. The pelletization process for these is the same as taconite. So how did it save the U.S.? Taconite pellets turned out to be even better than the original pure iron ore. Why? While they are better suited for cell phone loaders than iron ore, which makes the process faster and more precise, they have a longer season than iron ore because they have significantly less moisture, and they can also be way more precisely controlled, so steel mills know exactly what they are receiving. Taconite pellets are the material responsible for the making of steel. The car you drive, the plane you fly in, the buildings you see, all could quite possibly have originated from a Great Lakes freighter carrying taconite pellets. When iron ore was depleted, if a replacement wasn't found, there would be nothing to use to make steel. The U.S. would have had to look out of the country for more iron ore. This would be way more expensive. Taconite pellets were not only a replacement, but even better than the original iron ore. Now, these pellets are used in steel mills around the U.S. Anyway, subscribe for more shipping information videos, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.